Hey developers, today we're going to look at Vite. Now Vite is an experimental no bundle dev server for view single file components. I think you guys are going to like this. It's really easy and super, super quick to get a view app and view three app up and running. This is really cool. Evan, you just released it recently and I just wanted to give you guys an introduction to how to get started with it. Hey, and before we get too far, actually I have a quick word from our sponsor. So let's check that out. Today, I want to thank our sponsor, Remote.Work. Remote.Work is the best place to find remote jobs for people across the globe. It's also a great place for employers to find incredible talent. At Remote.Work, they add jobs every single day, and people can create resumes and apply for jobs right on the site. In fact, Remote.Work is creating a free-to-use resume creation tool right now that should be live very, very soon. For the longest time, I struggled to find a site that catered towards remote workers. I would look on job boards and be frustrated at the selection. Remote work would never be the focus, and finding a remote job that suits me was difficult. Remote.work really helps solve this problem. During this time, a lot of people are at home, and some people have even lost their jobs. Remote.work is a great resource to find that remote dream job, and it's perfect for this time. Thanks again to remote.work. Make sure if you guys are interested, I have a link in the description. Click that link in the description and you guys can check out remote.work. Now back to our video. Oh yeah, and if you guys are new to this channel, my name is Eric, I'm a full stack software developer. I'm also a huge fan of Vue.js, JavaScript, React, HTML, CSS. If those are really interesting to you, make sure you click that like button and uh, click that subscribe button too, that really helps me out. Cool. All right. So let's let's begin from the beginning. So let me explain what happened. So I see this tweet from Evan Yu, and as you guys know from listening to this, Evan Yu is the creator and author of Vue.js. And he said, I was going to bed and I had an idea about a no bundler dev setup using native browser ESM ports, but without support for Vue, but with support for Vue SFCs, which are single file components with hot reload. And then he got a proof of concept working at 6 a.m. So he spent all night working on it. And uh, yeah, so that has how Vite got started. And he actually open sourced it. And here is the first tweet about it. And then he actually talks a little bit more later on how he created a build command for it. And uh, yeah, it's pretty neat. Now, if you're not familiar with this no bundles, no bundler, Essentially, you're not using something like Webpack, and he actually does a pretty good explanation of what that means. So with this Vite, the primary difference between Vite is that there's no bundling during development, and the ESM port and syntax in your source code is served directly to the browser, and the browser parses them with via native script module support. And so since they're not using this Webpack bundler, it's really, uh, really quick. It's extremely fast start, and I'll show you guys that. It codes the, the, it's compiled on demand, and so only code actually imported in the current screen is compiled. You don't have to wait until your entire app to be bundled to start developing. This can be a huge difference in apps with dozens of screens. And it actually supports hot module replacement, um, which performance is decoupled from the total number of modules. So it just makes it really fast. And you know what I really think this is great for is just like quick prototypes and things like that. And, you know, I, w I wouldn't say this is not a bad idea too to start a whole view app or view project. So it's, uh, but it is highly experimental. It's not suitable for production use as of yet as this recording. So, but I think this is really fun to, to play around with. And he kind of goes into more about like hot module replacement, how it works. It's also really easy to get like CSS preprocessors and things started and running. Now I'm also gonna take a look at view router next, which is the latest version of view router and see if we can get it working with Vite, which uh, I think we should. Okay, so I have an empty folder here. And so to start, as it recommends, you do npx create Vite app and then the name of it. So we'll call it my Vite. And you can see here, it just went and did it like uh, instantly, like, like a half a second, it's done. So if you go to my Vite, and look at it, it just has three files in it, just an app.view, an index.html, and a package.json. So it does, um, you do have to do an npm install or npx vite, which does uh, like an, an install of it. And this this is like the slowest part of it, obviously, but it just takes, I don't know, a few seconds on a fast computer. Cool, so it's already done. 
And now I can do npm run dev, and there, it just started up in just one second. It's and localhost 3000. So now if I look op op open up localhost 3000, boom, here is our app. It's running single file component. And let's take a look at it, what it looks like under the hood. So there's this index.html where it just does this script type equals module, does this create app. And you can see this is view three. It has this mount. And then inside the app, here is the app. It's uh, here's our data object. Obviously, you can see here you press the button, make this a little bigger. It's incrementing, so it's definitely working out of the box. So, but we can play around with this. This is view three. So you can see here, right? You can notice it's a view three app because we don't have a single element that everything surrounds everything. There's multiple elements and templates, so we definitely know it's a view three app. By the way, I had Vitor installed and it was giving me like errors that I didn't have one single element. It had some uh, ESLint errors, but I turned that off so you guys don't have to see that. But yeah, you can see it right here. I can also, you know, create a setup function if I wanted to and and start doing stuff for there. Um, hello world. If I wanted hello world. And if you look here, inspect, see the hot reloaded real quickly too. Hello world. Cool. Don't worry about this error. That's from a plugin from a Chrome extension that I have. But yeah, hello world, everything's working. And if I wanted to, I could start doing all sorts of composition API stuff in here. And, and I don't think I'm going to do that for this one, but I wanted to show you like just how super easy and quick this is. Like let's, let's create a new folder called components. I'm going to create a new file called eric.view. I'm going to use a template. This is an extension that I have that allows me to do this. By the way, I don't need these divs. I don't need a single one in here. So I'll go, hello from Eric Component. And I'll do uh, test one, two, three. I don't know. Maybe I'll, I'll uh, add a data object. Let's see here. And I'll just say test. Now let's say world. Hello world. I had H3 with this world. Cool. So now I should be able to import this into app view, right? Should work right. Let's do import Eric from components slash Eric dot view. And of course I need the components here. And Eric. And I could just add it in here. Let's see if it worked. Oh, it says um, components 404 not found. Let's see what I did wrong here. Oops, I have this in the wrong folder. Let me move it. Move. There we go. Cool. So here, hello from Eric. So you see the component loaded up correctly. Uh, everything's fine after I moved it in the right folder. Sweet. So, I mean, yeah, I, I just created an app. I can now start, I, I can put layout folders. I can do everything I normally do in a, a normal app here. Now, you can see probably thinking like, well, we're kind of missing a few things. Let's say we wanted to add in SAS. So let's, let's take a look at that. We can go over here. Oh, don't worry about that error. I can do npm install dash d SAS. And this will go ahead and install SAS for us. And so once we have SAS involved, let's see if it works. I'm gonna do npm run dev. And now remember if we do, I believe it's lang equals scss. And now I say, let's say I have an h1. So I have a paragraph tag here. Let's say I want to say this paragraph tag I want to select the button and then make the background color uh, red. And I don't know, I'll put height 95 pixels. Let's see what it looks like. Okay, here's, so it's obviously it's working correctly it, when it made the changes and and now we have uh, SESS in there, which is perfect, that, that easy to just add something in. Now let's do something a little bit harder. 
Now, as of this recording, I believe they're in their releases, the View Router Next is a repository. They have Alpha 7 is the latest. And this is going to be the, the router that's going to ship with View 3, as far as I've been told. So we can actually use the View Router Next with it. Let's see if we can do that. So to do that, we're going to do npm install view router, and then we're going to give it a specific um, version, which we said from their releases is alpha 7, I believe. So alpha 0.7. Let's install that. Cool. So if we look back in our package, so we have alpha 7 installed. Now, to get it working, we have to do a few things here. So we need to, to probably create a new folder. I'll make sure I'm creating the right place this time. I'll call it router. And inside the router, I'm going to create a file called index.js. And uh, just for the simplicity's sake, I'm going to copy and paste this from another screen. OK, so here you can see here, we're using this create router and create web history. And this is a little different than you've probably seen in Vue 3 apps. But we have to use this create web history. This is just some new stuff. You have to look through the documentation of the new uh, router for. And I'm also going to reference some folders that I haven't created yet for this home and contact. So these are going to be two new components that we create in the views folder. And so we're just going to have one slash and one contact. So let's see if we can create these folders, views. And then we're going to create a new file called home. And then a new file called contact. And we're going to just do this. And once again, go to h3 contact. And for this one, vbase, we're going to use h4 for home. OK, it's so really simple, nothing in these. I just want to see if it works. I can route to them. So I have route, contact, cool. Now, what I should be able to do is set it up in here. Now, um, I'm going to switch this around. I'm going to do const app equals. I'm going to grab this guy. And then I'm going to have app.mount. But before this, I'm going to do app.use and router. And of course, that's not going to work. So I'm going to import in router from this is the router um, folder. And I think it's an export default. Cool. It's an export default. So it should work. All right. So now we have export default here. Now, the next thing we need to do is actually do uh, create a route to it. So we can kind of play around with this. But inside our app view, we can add some links to it and then also uh, then uh, display the information. OK, so I'm going to add in a router dash view. And then we need some router links. So obviously, this is kind of ugly looking. So I'm going to kind of just get rid of that. And then we need router link with a two. And we're going to have the first one just be to the home. And we're going to go home. And then we're going to create one, two, contact. That's going to be contact. And then it should appear in this router view. Now, obviously, this might be make more sense if we add this into a navigation. But we just want to see if it works. So I'm going to run dev. Oops, npm run dev. OK, it's running. So OK, it gave us an error. OK, actually, I know what the problem is. And I don't, I don't know why this is. And if someone knows, they can tell me. Uh, so sometimes uh, it doesn't like the import in with this import like this. So I can rename this file to, I don't know, route.js. And then inside my index.html, just point to the route.js file instead. And then uh, that, that should work. So let's see here. I think I just need to restart the server. Oh, um, router.js, router. There we go. So now we have home and contact. If it contact, goes to the contact route, you can see the URL changed. If it home, goes to the home route. If I hit contact, refresh, it's still in the contact route. So now I have created 
two routes using the view for router. Yeah, and everything seems to work. Uh, so that's really cool. So like within just you know a, a very quick time, I created a, an app using view router, added SAS to it. I mean, literally, this is super, super fast. And by the way, I did get some, it does give you some errors in the console doing it this way, but you can just ignore them. It just seems to work fine. And also if you do uh, npx vite, I think it's actually npm run build, it'll actually run vite and it'll build it for production. And you can see here, it just created three files. If we go to the dist folder, there's the three files and it does everything for us. Um, you know, it's pretty nice. I mean, it, at this point, I can just run a local server and, or I can put this, uh, upload this into any one of my services and uh, everything will work great. So cool. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to show you guys that as a quick introduction. Uh, I'm really looking forward to also showing you guys Vuex in the future, especially new Vuex 4 with TypeScript support, which that'd be really cool. And that's something a lot of people have been asking for, especially who are jumping on the TypeScript bandwagon like myself. But I want to hear what you guys think. Leave a comment below about Vite. Thanks.